Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm here at uh, Akbar in Island, and I'm here with Kevin Shulman, one of the top Sandler sales trainers in America today, and he's got some important information to share with us. So uh, stay tuned, we're going to be eating Indian food today and uh, having a great lunch. Okay, this is Kier. This is their uh, dessert. It's a pudding, and we might try that later. So we have some lentils, we have some uh, cream spinach with cheese, we have the uh, paneer here, it's potatoes, and uh, what do we got here, more potatoes, more rice, and chicken tiki masala, oh yeah, that's a good one. This is Akbar, and it's very well laid out, it's a beautiful restaurant here in Island, and it's got a lot of table space in the main dining room. The uh, chat noodles that they have. And they have some coriander and some curry and soup for those that want soup. Okay, so here's their version of the salad bar. Um, mint chutney, uh, some rice, some sausage, some eggplant. And some chickpeas. And chickpeas. Alu tiki masala. Okay, look at this. I'm going to try some. here with Kevin. Kevin is trying the uh, alu tikka. What is that? I've got no idea what it is, but it's good. Tastes like potato? It's uh, definitely got a lot of potato. Got a nice zing. Uh, definitely your mouth is awake after eating this, uh, but in a good way. Some uh, appetizers here. I have uh, a potato. Mmm, curry. Very good. And one of these alu tikas which is essentially like a falafel. It's fried and it's made into these little patties and they're wonderful, absolutely wonderful. We have the onion culture here and uh, how is it? You just had the first bite. It is hot and delicious and soft and crunchy all at the same time. It's a wonderful thing. My favorite Indian bread is the onion culture. I did order the onion culture because I don't know if they make the one with the coconut and raisin because that one is like eating cake. But the onion culture is wonderful. Mmm. Bits of onion in between the layers of the bread. Just absolutely melts in your mouth. Yes, it's a crepe. Side, uh, you have a coconut sauce and a garlic sauce. In a crepe, we put potatoes, onions, and all the stuff inside. Okay, I'm going to try it. I love about Indian is it's, every time it's a different flavor. But there's some potato inside and some garlic sauce. Mmm. Ooh, that's a home run. That's good. That is um, better than a blintz. Oh, 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 one Jew to another. <laughs> I, I, I didn't say better than my grandma's blintz. Okay. I just said better than a blintz. I made my blintz with all the garlic and onion sauce there, and let's see what this I've tastes like. I've got this Indian blintz in front of me, and it's just filled with potatoes and stuff and that special sauce. Let's see what this thing tastes like. Oh, it's got coconut too. Oh, this thing's really tasty. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> you guys gotta get down here to that bar. Now if you call Kevin, he might he might take you. But this is absolutely amazing. I don't think I've ever had anything like this. This is gonna be a fun lunch. So tell me a little bit, what did you put on your plate that you want to try? We've got some chicken tikka, which just looks wonderful and is always my favorite. We've got a piece of tandoori chicken and uh, a spinach, which is kind of a spinach paneer because there's some cheese in here someplace and that I just had took a taste of and it's absolutely wonderful. It has a nice kick and um, the chicken tikka I'm going to try now because this is the one I've been looking forward to. Always one of my faves. Mm. Up the snub. Yeah. It's delicious. Yeah. It's got flavor and kind of wakes up your mouth but it's not hot and spicy. It's just got a nice little zing to it. Mm, very good. fan of chicken tikka masala. I've got me some here at Akbar. Let me see what this is like. Oh. Just melts in your mouth. This is just probably one of the best Indian restaurants in New Jersey. Mm. I'm not a big chicken fan, but this is melting your mouth soft. It's wonderful. And the flavor just bursts. This is, this is wonderful.
Kevin, you really know your restaurant. Uh, so, Kevin, you're pretty much the uh, top Sandler trainer in New Jersey and probably one of the top four in America. What brings salespeople to you for training? What are the two biggest reasons companies send their salespeople to you for training in this environment? This is 2012 now. Okay, so biggest things that are getting people to us in the last year or two, primarily sales cycles have gotten longer. People are taking longer and longer to make decisions in this environment. They're worried about making the right decision. They're checking people. They're shopping more. They're trying to commoditize our products and services. And that's just driving everything to take longer. And then what compounds it is the average salesperson doesn't have extra stuff in their funnel to compensate for the longer sales cycle. So they end up doing fewer deals a year, and that's a problem. Well, how do you solve that problem? Ah, that's what training is. <laughs> that one you have to pay for. Uh, but the reality is you've got to take control of the process up front and talk to new prospects about the process of the selling cycle and what does that look like and how long are you going to allow them to take to make that decision. Well, you know, there's a lot of sales training systems out there. What makes Sandler so much better? There you go. There's another good question. A couple of good answers. One is, and first and foremost, we're all about ongoing reinforcement training. None of us do the eight-hour seminar and then all of a sudden change the way we run our business. We're just not hardwired to take information in that way. So rather, we do small doses over long term, and that way we can really change people's behavior. And more than anything else, I'm in the people changing business. In today's marketplace, where virtually everything is commoditized, how do you train somebody to prevent them from selling strictly by price? Probably the biggest problem I have with uh, business owners that are sending me salespeople, their complaint is that their sales guys are dropping price first and trying to sell on price, when we all know we should be selling value rather than price. And one of the biggest problems is salespeople feel the need to educate their prospects. And they forget that one of the few universal truths in sales is that they always buy for their reasons, never your reasons. And if we can just spend some time asking enough questions to find out what their real buying reasons are and what their compelling reasons are to buy, then they'll realize that you're the kind of business physician or your sales physician that's willing to diagnose before they prescribe. Biggest difference. Thank you very much. This has been a very interesting lunch. And you're welcome. This has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it.